Want to scar a Sonic fun? Watch this. Classic! <laughs> After being gone for quite some time, Classic Sonic made a triumphant return in the 2011 title Sonic Generations, a game that many considered a return to form for the character, and has since propelled this iteration of the character into mainstream popularity once again, outshining even his modern iteration. After Generations, Izuka stated that Classic Sonic's return was a one-time only thing, and that this game marked a closed chapter in the Sonic franchise, with promise of new endeavours and adventures to come. <laughs> After Boom and Lost World sunk the brand to new lows it had just crawled out of, uh, let me check my notes. Three years prior? Wow, it's like a whole new record. So now that they were once again at rock bottom, Sega had to get back into the good graces of the fandom. And how were they gonna do that? Classic <laughs> Sonic for everyone! They held their 25th anniversary party in 2016 and presented all the stuff they had been working on and... Did y'all hear a buzzing? Shit, let me just... Oh, okay, there we go. Watch, 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 right here, right here. They started by adding classic Sonic and Green Hill Zone to Sonic Dash. Sonic joining LEGO Dimensions, and sure, he's got the modern design, but to make up for that, we got Green Hill, Marble Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Metropolis, and Downworld Coast. But then we got the two major announcements the Aesop Segus Theoretical Sleeve. Sonic Mania, an all-new 2D classic Sonic adventure starring everyone's favourite pixelated hedgehog, and also a modern Sonic game. Starring who else but classic Sonic? But wait, I thought Azuka said he wanted to close that chapter and move on to bigger and better things. So classic is here to stay, and while a lot of 3D modern Sonic fans were a little peeved their next mainline game would once again be shared with, you know, not 3D modern Sonic, it couldn't be that bad, right? I mean, look, it promises the team behind Sonic Colors and Generations are working on it. It shows modern Sonic boosting and quick-stepping and... Oh, okay. If you want the story on some of Sonic Force's feelings, check out my previous video on the matter. But for now, I want to briefly touch on how Sonic Forces retroactively made other Sonic games, namely Generations, look worse in comparison. Forces gameplay was derived from Lost World's coding, which in turn was derived from Generations. Which means we basically have an inbred, bastardization clone of Generations. Here's a little example of some of Lost World's weird gameplay quirks making their way into Forces. During the tunnel sections of Lost World, Sonic moves a lot slower going left to right, and faster going forward and back. Then if you look at Sonic Forces without boosting, Sonic will reach his top speed animation when in 3D, but in a 2D section it's impossible without the use of a dash pad. This one's harder to see in video, but if you play the game yourself, you can notice there's a very weird lurch in Sonic's acceleration when he's reaching his top speed. This is because they did a shoddy job making his jogging to running from Lost World look like a gradually accelerated run. The fact there's a noticeable hitch up in speed is genuinely kinda gross and makes me wonder if they knew what they were even doing. Did you guys know what you were doing? Leave a comment. In, in my inbox. I don't know where I'm going with this joke, can we pretend it never happened? This lack of polish and shoddy design has made people retroactively shit on Generations, especially Classic Sonic, as he too faced many problems and forces which are... evident. This was further emphasized from the poorly timed release of Sonic Mania only a few months prior, which provided not only a one-to-one -one recreation of the physics present in Classic Sonic games, but an improved version of the physics found in them. Whoa. A Sonic game that improves of what came before? What are the odds? All this together has caused people to go back to Generations version of Classic Sonic and say, Well, it's no mania, but at least it isn't as bad as Sonic Forces. Is that it? Is that really all Generations Classic segments are worth? No offense, Sega, but not being as bad as Sonic Forces isn't exactly the hardest thing to do. So after going back to replay it after all these years, I think I've come to a conclusion on how I feel about Classic Sonic's inclusion in Generations. It is severely underrated. Really, Splashdash? You're gonna sit here and tell me that the Sonic game that IGN gave an 8.5 is underrated? Well, no. When people go back to Sonic Generations, most of the time they're singing the praises of modern Sonic, the music, graphics, presentation. But since the release of Sonic Mania plus Sonic Forces, more and more people have been going back to dock Generations a few points for classic Sonic not being very good. And I personally think it's undeserved. So let's talk about that. Here is how Sonic Generations takes classic Sonic and subverts it to create an experience that I think is like none other in this franchise. I'm sorry for getting sick of me bringing up Sonic Forces all the time, 
but I feel it's almost mandatory here, as it's the perfect example of what Sonic Generations could have been if Sega were as lazy and clueless back then as they are today. But back in 2011, just seeing classic Sonic again was a novelty. Remember Sega released a game called Sonic the Hedgehog fucking 4, and not even that had classic Sonic. So this is a big deal, even just seeing him in 3D was cool. And Sega didn't just want to do the bare minimum here, they wanted to surprise the audience, they wanted to do a classic Sonic game but on a triple A budget. Or at least a double A. Let's look at the first level of Generations, Green Hill Zone, and go over just how well it subverts the audience's expectations for how they're going to treat the classic gameplay. Then after, we'll look at Forces and see just how impactful all this was, because you may not have noticed it at the time, but your brain did. What's really clever about Green Hill Zone is that they started off with a zoomed in perspective of the stage. Classic is quite big standing there, not to mention the level layout appears to be the exact same. Same three rings just floating there. So right off the bat you think, Okay, Sega, I smell where you're stepping in. You're just gonna take these old levels and recreate them with your fancy schmancy graphics. How creative. But here's the thing. Then you move forward. So you're running along, passing that classic set piece with the Motobug, Buzz Bomber, and Ten Ring Monitor. And something happens. The screen starts to slowly zoom out and you realize just how big this world is. It makes Classic Sonic feel so small, which in turn makes him appear more volatile. You start to take in this world more and more and that's when you realize, holy shit, this game looks really good. Green Hell Zone's background's no longer just a cascading waterfall and mountains. It looks like a giant fucking island that you're stuck in the middle of. There are tons of various background pathways and bridges, the layering is superb, especially in this series where sometimes I think a lack of immersion can be created by feeling like a lot of the levels take place floating in the sky, but here it's obvious you're just slap dab in the middle of this… what would you call it, a forest? I don't know, whatever. It's no wonder this version of Green Hill was used as a frame of reference for the Sonic movie, it looks so lush and organic, especially compared to… you know another game's green hill. But you can't focus on that for too long. You gotta be careful because there are stuff that can attack you and you gotta watch out for- OH SHIT JUST LIKE THAT! Wait a second. It didn't hurt me. And that's when you see that this 3D isn't just for show. Nah son, they're gonna take advantage of that extra dimension. In the classic Sonic games when you come to a bridge your automatic assumption is, oh crap get out of the way the chopper's coming. But here it gives you the time to visually see the enemy approach in the background and finally come into the foreground where it can openly attack you. It's even used for some platforming challenges later on like in Seaside Hill, that was a, that was a very clever idea. So you're moving right along trying to get to all the different pathways showing the level design here is just as diverse as always. And then we get to the part that blew me away as a kid. So you're shot down this loop sprung into the horizon and then… What the fuck, is that legal? Are you allowed to make a 2D game where the camera can shift into a 3D perspective like that? This obviously isn't anything groundbreaking, but when you've only seen Classic Sonic portrayed like this, or this, or, or sadly this, this shit was amazing, it blew my fucking mind. It showed us that Sega were bringing Classic Sonic back for one last hurrah, and they were gonna do it in motherfucking style. This method of shifting the camera's perspective does wonders in reminding the player that you're in a 3D space here, even if just limited to a 2D plane. But the game is constantly doing shit like this that manages to keep each level fresh. Scope is so important to a Sonic game, so, so important, and there are only a handful of games that make you feel that. You know what we like about the Sonic CD opening animation? It's because you've got this short little pudgy guy, and he is gonna fucking run around this whole landscape at the speed of sound like it's nothing. You know what we liked about the opening cinematic to Sonic Unleashed? It's the unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. Sonic is the unstoppable force. They do such a brilliant job at establishing how massive this armada is, then they plop Sonic into it and he turns it to fucking shreds, that is, that is just so cool. Sonic Generations understood this beautifully, the gun truck, the clock tower, even super simple design choices go a long way. Look at the loops in the classic games, now look at the size of this thing. We like the idea that Sonic is so powerful that he can traverse even the harshest of terrains that any other person would be killed in. And not only that, but he does it in style. Bring back the trick system, what was wrong with it? Another amazing level is Sky Sanctuary, although I won't focus on it for too long. Again, it starts with the whole zoomed in thing, love it. But throughout the entire level, Sonic is moving in and out of different planes, turning around corners in a 3D space gone all over the place, up, down, and all around. 
In this one still image, you can see three different pathways I could be going on. Not only does it increase replayability, because while you're playing, you'll go, Oh fuck, I want to go over there. But it also immerses you in the world. It feels lived in. I mean, just look at City Escape. It's the perfect example of subversion. So we all know that the gun truck chases you at the end of City Escape. That's like, it's like everyone knows that. And while that's true in the modern level, for classic, you start it fairly normally, just in some peaceful park and a lot of robots around. And then you come up to these buildings that are just fucking annihilated by the gun truck that relentlessly chases you throughout the entire level, taking advantage of the fact that it's in 3D by letting you see it in the background driving to catch up even having it interact with you at times by having it turn and drive towards you trying to run you over. But back to Sky Sanctuary, it then all culminates at the end with running up the building to reveal that there were three different pathways to get there the whole time. I rarely see anyone give this game the credit it deserves for the classic level design. And guess what? The controls aren't even that bad, they're just... not the same. Sure, the jump is a little gimped and the roll does fuck all, but the general feel of it still works well, and the level design is built around how he controls. And come on, the spin dash is OP, but it's so fun to use. But if you still don't believe me and don't appreciate how much effort went into this game, which you better. Let's do something I always end up regret saying. Let's play Sonic Forces. Ugh. Classic's first level in Forces is that dumb city, but for the sake of comparison, let's go over its iteration of Green Hill. So Green Hill and Sonic Forces starts in a very similar way to Generations, being it's the exact same layout as the original Sonic 1, and also it's very zoomed in. Then as you progress, you realize, oh, this is it. There's no slow zoom out to reveal how they're going all out with this adventure. There's no grand scale or scope to anything. You look at the background and what do you see? Mountains and sand instead of water. Just gonna, just gonna show these two images and you tell me which looks more visually impressive. And to all two Sonic Forces fans who are gonna jump at me to yell, But that's the point, mo- But that's the point, Splash Dash, Green Hill has been destroyed and is desolate now. Although I find it hard to imagine a Sonic Forces fan using a word like desolate. But the thing is, we never really get a feel that through the gameplay. We never actually run on the sand. It's only ever in the background. It doesn't give off the vibe of us being plopped in the middle of this destroyed world. It feels like you're running around on a video game level elevated above the ground. How come this is the only place in this entire landscape that is walkable terrain? Because it's a video game and it needs platforms. How lazy. Speaking of lazy, this world does not feel lived in at all. What the fuck is this shit? Honestly, how fucking incompetent do you have to be to think that's okay? There's so many flat, almost Lego looking blocks and platforms floating in midair that takes you right out of it. And remember in something like Sky Sanctuary and how you're constantly being flung in and out of different planes, still making it feel like an alive world in 3D? How about five classic Sonic stages all shot from the same perspective 100% of the time with no play on the fact that you're in a 3D space? See this right here? This is the only moment in any classic Sonic stage from Forces that exhibits any kind of emotion or flair. And even that peels in comparison to the most basic of things Generations managed to pull off. Sonic Generations is a game that feels confident in what it's doing. It's taking you through Sonic's past and it's going to have fun while doing it. Meanwhile, Sonic Forces is the perfect example of what could have gone horribly wrong with Generations, and it very much annoys me when it's not given the praise it so clearly deserves. I can go over every stage here and talk about each and every meticulous detail I still to this day notice after all this time. Like look here in Seaside Hill. I only recently found this out, but did you know you could slide under here? Never noticed that, it's amazing. But that's what's so great about this scheme, there's always something new to find out. And with people being so harsh to the classic segments with lumping it into Sonic Forces, I get the feeling that a lot of people have forgotten about just how great it feels to play this game. So you know what? Go boot up Sonic Generations again. Play some classic Sonic stages and really take in how much effort went into it all. The meticulous planning that went into the level design, the alternate paths, integration of 3D. Because to me, Sonic Generations is one of the finest examples of 2.5D gameplay, even if you didn't really notice it the first time around. So my hats off to you, Sonic team. Let's give them a round of applause, everyone, because by gosh, they did something right for once. Yeah.